Well, hello everybody. Hi. Um, YouTube always cuts off the very, very start of the videos. So that's why I kind of pause a little bit. There's a little bit of an awkward silence. Um, you'll notice you've got a slightly different view today because I am painting something that side of my workshop. So I thought I would paint this piece, this side of the workshop. Um, so if you've been following along, I have been painting a coffee table live. So this has been completed over a series of lives. You can find some of them on my own YouTube channel and you can find some of them on the Dixie Bell YouTube channel. However, I hopefully have got enough footage to put together to edit um, a video at the end just in case people have missed anything or you haven't been following along or haven't been able to follow along for whatever reason because I know lives, you know, when they're on various different platforms hard to follow sometimes, especially with time differences because obviously I'm in the UK. So hello to those two people that said hi. Uh, I didn't catch your names because I'm a bit far away from the camera and uh, you know me, I'm half blind. Um, so hello, thank you for watching. So like I say, coffee table, this is going to be the final layer of colour that we're putting on. So just to recap, this coffee table, I was going to do a quick flip. It was going to be silk on the bottom, stay in the top. And hi, nice to see you live again, Connie. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, I am just jumping on really randomly and unplanned today uh, because I want to get this coffee table done. It's driving me around the bend. Hopefully, there won't be too much work on it after this. So I'm going to quickly do this because it's not long until school kicking out time and I've got to go and fetch the boy, a.k.a. Herbie. So I'm going to turn around, but I have got a mic on, so hopefully you can still hear me. So this is going to be a quick flip and it turned out that the table, the coffee table is veneer, um, which is not my best friend and it didn't want to cooperate with being stained. So as I was staining the top, it was lifting some parts of the damaged veneer. So I've gone with a technique that covers damaged pieces or disguises pieces that are damaged really really well so if you've got a piece that might be a little bit worse for wear and you're not entirely sure if it's repairable or it's definitely not repairable um this i mean i could have taken the veneer off and gone down that route but that's not enjoyable for anybody is it um so least of all me so we're going to go with it it's a very inexpensive there's no value to this piece it's a modern piece you know there's there's no value to it or anything like that it's definitely not old it's a modern piece so i've gone with a technique that gives it a little bit of character that embraces those flaws and that covers up some of those kind of worse bits of imperfection if you like so to recap the white color that you can see is called drop cloth that's the color it's a warm off white like an antique kind of warm white then um, I mixed that with sea spray, which is a texture additive, and stippled it all over. So that base coat is the bit that kind of hides the damage and disguises the worst of the damage. Then I went in with Honky Tonk Red. So these are all Dixie Belle colours, chalk mineral paint colours as well. Um, Dix uh, Honky Tonk Red, which is the red colour that you can kind of just see a little bit, maybe. Can you see? There's not a huge amount of Honky Tonk Red that's visible anymore, but there's a reason for that. Then I went in with this really pretty blue colour, which is called uh, the Gulf. And we're at the final stage. So each layer has been allowed to fully dry in between putting the next layer on. So it's been dried down. And you'll wonder why I'm waving this candle around. So I'm going to use this candle to create a resist. So obviously the candle is wax. I'm using a water-based paint. And what happens is when you put a wax and then a water-based paint over the top, the water-based paint doesn't stick over where you've applied the wax. So when I distress these layers back, what it means is where I've put this wax in between all these different colours, it's going to chip away and distress and reveal all of the layers underneath. Now you can do this without wax, it's just if you use wax it distresses more of the paint um, and it becomes kind of um, the colours become more kind of pure underneath because literally it won't water water based paint won't sit on top of this wax. So that's why I'm brandishing a candle 
So I've done this in between the other layers that you can see and I'm going to do it as well to this final layer and I'm not going to apply it everywhere and I'm going to apply it very very randomly so the thing that you want to bear in mind with this 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 technique it doesn't take any skill there is no rhyme or reason to how you apply your layers you can see it's totally random looks like a right royal mess um, but it'll all come together in the end, trust me. So I'm just applying it really, really randomly. Um, you can use other oil-based products or wax-based products. I like to use a candle or a beeswax block, which are like little blocks of beeswax, just because you can be more precise with them so you can see where it's kind of been rubbed on corners. If you get a product like Big Mama's Butter, which is obviously an oil-based soft wax. If you're gonna try and put that on the edges, it's a little bit harder to be precise with. If you're going for a really chippy look, then yeah, you can absolutely use Big Mama's Butter and, and that kind of gives a really distressed chippy look. It looks really good. Um, you can use Vaseline, you can use a candle, you can use beeswax, um, anything that's oil-based wax. So, uh, you know, like this kind of thing, that'll do it. So, like I say, just really, really randomly applying this in areas where I don't want this black paint to stick. Not too much. Don't want to go overkill. Don't want to go overkill. So, the next colour and the final colour is caviar. This is the true black in the chalk mineral paint range and I'm just using a natural bristle brush. So, these are the premium chip brushes. Um, they are very inexpensive, but really good for kind of texture, um, using with sea spray, because they're not gonna, you, you don't run the risk of, you know, knackering up your nice brushes if you use one of these. Um, having said that, I actually, I, I mean, chip brushes, they are intended for, to use like a couple of times and then you chuck them away. But um, I'm incapable of throwing anything away, it would seem. Um, I'm actually having a massive sort out in my workshop. I don't know if you can see up there. So right up there, I've got a shelving from top to bottom that is filled with Dixie Bell paint. And right at the top, I've got staging stuff. Um, I'm having a massive sort out because I need space to put terra clay paint and I haven't got any space because I keep holding on to junk that I don't use anymore. So you'll notice that I'm not using any water with this at all. I don't want to thin this down. I just want full coverage of this. And because um, Dixie Bell paint covers amazingly well, I think I'm gonna be able to get away with doing one coat of this. We'll see how it dries, but that's why I'm not using any water. I'm just literally slapping it on for want of a better expression. I know that furniture painters get a bad rap sometimes for being like, oh, you just slap furniture paint, uh, you just slap paint on furniture. Um, not always, but that is exactly what I'm doing in this case. Um, so I am just thickly applying this all over. Working it into all those areas where there's some raised texture, And I've used these colours because I kind of want this to look um, quite masculine. And I've used this colour kind of scheme before with apothecary stuff. And it sells very well. It gives that really worn, vintage, industrial, apothecary kind of vibe. But... I have also used many, many other colour combinations with this particular style, but because it's, it's quite a random process and you can make it as distressed and as chippy as you want or not, as the case may be, I've done some which have been a lot more subtle um, and not quite as kind of distressed. And then some that are really heavily distressed, just depends on the mood I'm in, how vicious I want to take it out on the furniture. Um, but yeah, you can you can kind of play around with it. And somebody that followed this perhaps tutorial, um, even if they followed it to the T, their piece would turn out completely differently. 
because it is quite random how you place the texture, where you put your colours, the colours that you use, how you distress it, means that every piece turns out a little bit different, which is kind of cool. Um, I quite like that. So hopefully, when we distress back, we're going to be able to see all those colours and reveal the layers underneath. So that has covered in one coat. I'm going to see how it dries, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need to do a second coat because we are going to be distressing this back anyway. So as long as I've got a pretty good coverage of the black, then we should be okay. And obviously this black is, you know, amazing coverage. So that's caviar, brilliant coverage. And I know that sounds weird for a black. Some blacks can be a little bit weird. They can be really patchy and a little bit odd. Um, but this black cover is perfect, 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 perfect. So that is my short live. There's no more that I can do because I do want to wait till this dries down to distress it. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to be distressing it on a live, mainly because I do sometimes use my electric sander because sea spray, because we've allowed, allowed that to dry rock hard, this will be quite difficult to distress by hand. Um, if I wasn't doing this over a series of lives, I would have probably allowed about an hour between each layer and distressed it before the sea spray could dry rock hard so that you can distress it with um, like a palette knife and it's got a little bit of softness to it. But because I've done it over a series of lives and obviously I'm kind of leaving a few days at least between each live, it's gonna be rock hard. So I don't know how I'm gonna distress this, whether it's gonna be live or whether I'm just gonna edit the video and, oh, okay, Joanne, you say you do wanna see it live. It's just the background noise of my electric sander that I'm always a little bit conscious of. Um, but maybe I could like whistle down the mic while I'm doing it. Or like play some lift music. <laughs> I could kind of mute myself and play some lift music while I'm doing electric sanding. I don't know, I don't think I can on a live. But if you want to see it, I will gladly do it on a live. I'm just aware that I probably will be using my electric sander. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. What I'll do is I'll probably distress maybe one of the sides and see how it goes. If I can get away with doing it by hand. The other thing is I can't get dust and stuff in my eyes when I distress by hand. It flies dust particles in the air and I've got really, really weird sensitive eyes. Um, hence the reason I've got a dustless sander. Um, so yeah, as long as you don't mind a bit of background noise, I don't mind distressing it live. And then what we could do is, yeah, we could probably finish it over the next maybe one or two. I'll probably finish it next week. I'll be finished this next week and then hopefully by then I'll have enough footage to edit a little video together so that I can put that on my YouTube channel just in case people have missed any part of the the lives as I've been going along so I will actually be quite glad to see the back of this piece I'll be brutally honest um I've only got a little space I've only got a little workshop that's that's the back and then there is a sideboard that I'm bright, painting bright orange so I've only got a little space so yeah it's been driving me nuts um but hopefully we'll get that finished next week because the last thing that I want to do is obviously just get it distressed um then I I'm possibly maybe doing a paint wash over it. We'll see how it goes, but I'll definitely be using some waxes and top coats and all those things to seal it with. So yeah, fingers crossed we can get that done next week over the next kind of two lives between my YouTube channel and Dixie Bell's YouTube channel. So that is all for today. It has been a very, very quick live. I've got black paint everywhere. I've got black paint on my foot. How's that happened? I've got it. And that is, yeah beautiful shade of nail polish and I've been using no paint gel stain which is oil based and it's no good when you put that on nail polish and yeah now black paint on top of it so that's gonna have to come off tonight um so yes I, I'll do it live I'll do it all live I'll finish it live for you I'll do it all live um and yeah you'll just have to sing to yourselves when the 
when the sand is on, when the electric sand is on. You just have to, yeah, sing amongst yourselves. So that's where we are with it. It looks like we've just covered up all the hard work that we've been doing, which we kind of have, but don't worry, those layers are still there. They will still be apparent when we distress it back. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we can get it all. And I've also got the handles for it as well. Where are they? Bought myself a bloody lovely toolbox. Look at that bad boy, look at her. Oh, it's... The toolbox of dreams, it's lovely. Hello Dennis, hi. I've just about finished my live, but I'll put it, it'll be able to be replayed. So they're the kind of handles that I'm going for. Um, don't know if I'm gonna use black, but I'm gonna use like these card holder handles because these handles are perfect for this kind of style, this industrial apothecary kind of style. These are also my favorite handles. Like they will make anything look cool, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so yeah, I have only got black. They would look kind of good in like a, like an antique brassy kind of finish. But I don't, I don't think I've got any in an antique brass. So maybe I should order some in an antique brass. So yeah. That's how, that's how it's going, that's, that's it. I've got to leave that to dry and I'll be back next week. So I am live at the same time every week on the Dixie Bow YouTube channel. That's two o'clock in the afternoon UK time, which works out at 9 a.m. EST. Um, so I'm always live on the Dixie Bow YouTube channel every Tuesday at that time. When I'm live on my own YouTube channel is, it's, it's a good question. Um, it's basically whenever I've got sort of half an hour free to pop on and, and do the next kind of thing. So um, sometimes it's, I put it in my stories and sometimes I just do it unannounced like today. Um, I could put gilding wax on them. Yep, yeah, so that would be, yeah, that would be something that I could do. So I could change the black and make them into like an age kind of coppery. Yeah, why didn't I think of that? Great idea, Joanne. Thank you. Um, so I'll use those handles because I've got some plenty of them and I'll I'll make them look old and um, battered and coppery and not coppery, brassy, that kind of look. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. It'll be fun. So thank you for watching today. Um, I've got to go and get my little boy from school. Nancy's at home. Not very well today. Um, so yeah, that's been a fun day trying to juggle all that so i'll catch you next week let me know if there's the next project you want to see me do so hopefully like i say this will be wrapped up next week and then we can move on to something else if you want to see me work with terra clay paint um that'll be fun because it's unpredictable at the best of times um if you want to see me upcycle some home decor pieces or use silk or whatever let me know in the comments and i will see you all soon thanks for joining me bye